The top stories tonight and why news. A research team from the University of the Philippines finds that COVID-19 cases in the Philippines may spike to 40,000 once all restrictions and quarantine measures are eased up this month. President Rodrigo Duterte to announce changes in quarantine restrictions on Monday, June 15. SSS members have until June 15 to pay their February, March, and April contribution. The Supreme Court aims to formulate rules on video conference hearings. Scrapping of the two-meter social distancing rule in the UK looms. Weightlifting may not have a place in Olympic Games to come. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Thursday, June 11, 2020. I am Harlene Delgado. Join us in the next 45 minutes as we deliver today's top stories around the globe by Manuel Castro III. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Theo. First in the news, a research team from the University of the Philippines finds that COVID-19 cases in the Philippines may spike to 40,000 if all restrictions and quarantine measures are eased up this June. The UP Okta research team does not recommend the total easing of restrictions this month, especially the transmission of the deadly respiratory disease continues. We are not the 1.2 Philippines. The projection actually is nasa 40,000 cases by now, by June 30. So, pag nagbago yung trends na yan, uh, magbabago yung projection. Pwede tumaas, pwede tumaba. Meanwhile, a political science expert recommends that the government and all citizens individually must take the necessary measures to prevent the projected spike in COVID-19 cases. Aiko Miguel reports why. Although it appears that the R0 or reproductive number of COVID-19 cases in the country is at 1.2%, this does not mean it will not increase. This is the warning of UP Okta research team. UP Okta is a group of researchers and scientists that has been studying the trend of COVID-19 cases in the Philippines since April. The team explains the 1.2% R0 serves as the infection rate or number of transmission of COVID-19 in people. This means that a confirmed case can now transmit to only one person since quarantine measures have been implemented in the country. But once the government lifts all community quarantine measures, one active case may transmit the virus to a bigger number of individuals. Kumakalat pa yung COVID-19, makakahawa siya at marami pa makahawa. Kung hindi tayo gagawa ng mga hakbang both at national government and local government level at sa level po ng individual. So, uh, yun, I think, ang number one takeaway. Uh, andyan pa significant pa yung community transmission. And uh, marami pa tayong kailangan gawin para i-manage yung uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic sa bansa. On the other hand, it is good news that the mortality rate in the country has decreased and higher number of COVID-19 survivors are being reported for 52 days already. But according to the DOH and experts, cases might double and hospitals would reach their maximum capacity if people are allowed to go outdoors already. The public is reminded not to be complacent and to follow the minimum health standards like wearing face masks, physical distancing, and proper hand hygiene. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The national government advises the public not to believe the in leaked documents that indicate changes in community quarantine restrictions in some parts of the country. What comes, what comes after June 15? President Rodrigo Duterte will announce that on Monday. Our Malacanang correspondent, Rosalie Cos, will give the details why. 
The Interagency Task Force Against COVID-19 has no final recommendations yet on the quarantine restrictions after June 15, according to the palace. Local government units still have the chance to appeal to the IATF about their coronavirus disease risk classification, which their community quarantine depends on. It will be President Rodrigo Duterte himself who will announce his approval on the quarantine recommendations on Monday. Secretary Roque says that local governments have the ample time to prepare even if the announcement will be made on Monday. Ang decision lang naman na inaantay ng taong bayan, ano mangyayari sa Metro Manila, ano mangyayari sa Cebu City. No? And the only options are either magiging MGCQ or magiging GCQ or babalik sa MECQ. No? Pero hindi po masyado kumbaga, bago o different yung uh, mga uh, classification na po pwedeng papuntahan ng Metro Manila at ng Cebu City. The official also reminds the public not to believe in leaked documents on changes in community quarantine before the president's public address on Monday. Some documents had previously been released on social media ahead of the national government's announcements on community quarantine. But up to this moment, the Duterte administration has yet to decide on this. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Balik Probinsya, bagong pag-asa trips are suspended for now. But the government will roll out another set of trips to the province. Asher Kadapan Jr. explains why. National Housing Authority General Manager Marcelino Escalada Jr. announced today the suspension of the Balik Probinsya Bagong Pag-asa program of the government. Its postponement will give way to the Hatid Tulong program another project of the government which aims to transport stranded individuals in Metro Manila to their respective provinces. This was a very clear instruction from the President, unahin, pauwiin na ang ating mga kababayan na stranded dito sa Maynila. And these are the OFWs, the construction workers, ating mga turista and estudyante. So that is the arrangement right now. The Balik Probinsya Bagong Pag-asa program has already transported about 100 individuals to Leyte. As of today, there are almost 100,000 applications for the said program. GM Escalada explains that once the stranded individuals are sent home, the government will resume the Balik Probinsya program. I foresee that in the next month, let's say for example July, I think Bababa na ang demand ng stranded and therefore si Balik Provincia will now take our second rollouts by that time. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. The national government announces its policies for assisting locally stranded individuals. The policies include subjecting them to rapid testing for COVID-19. Rosalie Kos details why. Malacanang extends its condolences to the family of Michelle Silvertino, born in Camarines Sur, single mother of four children, and was stranded in a footbridge in Pasay City for five days. She died on Friday while waiting for a ride back to Bicol Region. Based on reports, she might have contracted the coronavirus disease. Because of the incident, the Duterte administration announces a policy on assisting locally stranded individuals to prevent such incident from happening again. Nakipag-coordinate na po ang DSWD na kanila, sa kanilang field office para ma-assist ang pamilya ni Michelle. Wala pong gusto mangyari ito pero gagawa na po tayo ng hakbang para hindi na po maulit ang nangyari kay Michelle. The National Task Force Against COVID-19 and the Department of Social Welfare and Development will lead the government's effort transporting Filipinos stranded in Metro Manila back to their provinces. The locally stranded individuals will be taken to the Villamore Air Base and will undergo rapid testing for COVID-19. Tutulungan ng gobyerno ang lahat ng stranded, yung mga nasa airport at sa mga bus. Inaasikaso na po ito ng DOTR. Meanwhile, Malacanang reminds the local government units to be proactive in helping stranded residents and people in need. The government is gathering data on the total number of locally stranded individuals in NCR. For those who are stranded, they can coordinate with the nearest DSWD office. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God.
Meanwhile, 22 persons deprived of liberty or PDL in Zamboanga City who had been released from the city reformatory center have returned to their homes after testing negative for COVID-19. Since their release, they had undergone more than a month of mandatory quarantine and a series of swab tests. The city government is grateful to the medical workers who help the patients recover. Zamboanga City Mayor Ben Climaco said that the increasing number of recoveries brings hope to Zamboangueños. Ready to go and there is no end in sight to this pandemic. The strict adherence to the health protocols and quarantine guidelines will be the key to suppress the transmission of this virus. Meanwhile, eight other PDLs who had been released and have recovered from COVID-19 are also expected to return to their homes if they get negative results in their final swab test. And in the Philippines, the country's Department of Health says that 443 new cases were reported today, raising the total confirmed cases of coronavirus infection in the Philippines to 24,175. That is, as of 4 p.m. today, we have lost nine more patients. But through our fervent prayers, medical interventions, and sacrifices of our medical frontliners, 270 more people have won their battle against the invisible enemy. That brings the total recoveries nationwide to 5,165. Thanks be to God. The Social Security System, or SSS, reminds its members and employers about the deadline of remitting their contributions. But SSS offices can serve only a limited number of payments per day. Ray Pelayo will join us tonight to tell us why live. Yes, Ray, good evening. Good evening, Will. That's right. Uh, SSS branches are accommodating only a limited mm -hmm. number of uh, clients per day. In fact, I went to SSS Diliman branch today. Its office serves only 250 payments per day due to the implementation of uh, health uh, protocols. The deadline of payments for the month of uh, February, March, and April is set on Monday, June 15. SSS wants to remind its members, uh, Will, uh, it, I, I was able to talk with the several SSS members and uh, some of them say that although there is an option to pay their contributions online, they need to transact physically because of their cases. Just like Manuel Al Albarido and uh, Carlo McDon. Nagtry po ako kaya napo. Dito ako pinapunta kasi dito na sa main ng transaction ng reklamo ko. Di na kasi sila nag-generate ng mga lumang payment form na ganito. So kailangan mo siyang i-direct, i-manual mo. Will there are other uh, SSS members who are well aware of uh, physical distancing? while another whom I also talked with uh, preferred to pay at a later time. Anyway, she's, he has an, uh, she has an option. Pwede pa daw sa July ako magbabayad. Wala daw penalty. Hindi ako marunong mag-online. Well, well, yes, Ray, uh, it's good that SSS is complying with the minimum health standards and even SSS members are aware of that. Not noticeably, SSS has made some adjustments. Mm -hmm. That's right, uh, Will. In fact, SSS apologizes for uh, the inconvenience and the uh, delays because of several adjustments uh, they, have, uh, they have to make. Of course, uh, this is to observe health protocols and uh, prevent the spread of COVID-19 and uh, will aside from uh, contributions, other services like applications for retirement and other SSS benefits are also uh, open, open. Will? Yeah, thank you Ray Pelayo for that report live. Malacanang clarifies that online sellers who have an annual net income of less than 250,000 pesos are exempted from the Bureau of Internal Revenue's recent memorandum circular. 
The palace also defends the BIR's move to tax big online sellers. The BIR's memorandum circular is being criticized for its timeliness. Numerous people who lost their jobs from the pandemic resort to selling various products online. But according to uh, presidential spokesperson Harry Roque, the government has to collect taxes to sustain the response against COVID-19. The palace also reiterates it is already taxing the Philippine offshore gaming operators or POGOs and they are not allowed to operate if they have tax liabilities. The Duterte administration is confident the Philippines can pay its loans amid economic losses to coronavirus pandemic. According to Acting Socio-Economic Planning Secretary Carl Kendrick Chua, the Philippines maintains its good credit rating despite a high debt-to-gross domestic product or GDP ratio of the country this year. The government was able to secure billions uh, of U.S. dollars of foreign loans from various financial institutions in May to sustain the government's COVID-19 response. The official also believes the Philippine economy will be able to recover from the pandemic. We have a very good uh, fiscal position and uh, we have been very prudent in showing the international community that we can also provide the funds to support our economic recovery. We, we did tax reform, uh, three packages passed already, and that is what is fueling confidence that we can actually uh, repay our, our loans. Restaurants with dine-in services in Metro Manila and other areas under the general community quarantine get the green light from the IATF. Vincent Arboleda will tell us why. The Department of Trade and Industry understands the plight of workers on the food industry. Due to this, DTI Secretary Ramon Lopez says they have recommended to the Interagency Task Force to allow dine-in services in general community quarantine areas, including Metro Manila. A move that was approved by the IATF through the IATF Resolution No. 45. Under the IATF Resolution No. 45, dine-in services will be allowed but limited to 30% operation capacity of the facility and must adhere to the minimum health standards set by authorities. For Jose Sacramento, a restaurant owner in Tomas Morato, Quezon City, this is a major thing as his business has been on the negative this past weeks. And with the upcoming resumption of dine-in services on Monday, Jose is now preparing his restaurant so they will be able to operate while following the guidelines. Based on the minimum health standards set by the DTI, facilities would implement the use of thermal scanner, no face mask, no entry policy, 1.5 meter distance of tables, sanitizing chairs and tables after every use, among others. But Jose is also worried if their income would be enough to sustain their operational expenses, including the salary of his employees. Despite this, Jose remains optimistic that they will somehow get past through this effect of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we are openly looking forward na magkaroon na at baka makatulong kasi right now it's a survival of the fittest. So matira matibay na lang kung if you can cope up until December of uh, until time na now you, you can still stand. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Philippine Supreme Court aims to formulate rules on video conference hearings before the end of the year. The idea came after some courts were not able to open in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. Dante Amendo tells us why. Some 1,350 courts across the country have been authorized to conduct video conferences or virtual hearings. This will allow the hearings of cases pending in courts to proceed, especially this time of the COVID-19 pandemic. Supreme Court Chief Justice Justado Peralta says that from March up to present, a total of 22,522 persons deprived of liberty have regained their freedom through the, the conduct of video conferencing. I have to look for a way to apply video conferencing. Peralta admits that for now, there are still no existing rules for video conference hearings. But he says, deliberations on the matter are underway and the Supreme Court aims to finalize the guidelines before the year ends. 
the video conferencing actually actually is not in our rules there is no rule that allows video conferencing except that, that this except that one that is now under pilot testing in Davao. the supreme court will also seek the help of congress if passing a legislation is necessary Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. 20 residents of Tai Tai Rizal will no longer have to walk to their workplaces for hours. That's with a little help from a youth group. John Patrick Nunez has the story why. A social civic youth organization in Rizal Province has launched a bike donation drive along with the celebration of the World Bicycle Day on June 3. Angat Kabataan, the official youth wing of Angat Taytay, focuses on youth empowerment, environmental sustainability, and good citizenship. But this time, Angat Kabataan has introduced a project that will benefit all ages by giving away free bicycles to Taytayenos who have gone back to work. At sa kawalan ng transportation ngayon, yun yung gusto naming ma-address sana. Na yung mga babalik ng trabaho papunta sa Metro Manila ay mabigyan natin ng bisikleta para magamit nila. No? Just like Bienvenido Artita Jr. who received a free bicycle from the youth group. Bienvenido Artita Jr., a father of two who works as a painter, walks more than two hours to get to his workplace in Marikina City in order to make ends meet for his family. He is grateful for being chosen as one of the project's beneficiaries. Talagang wala po masabi, talagang tatats po ako eh. Magagamit ko po yung pagpasok sa araw-araw. Malaking bagay po talaga ngayon sa panahon ngayon. Angat Kabataan aims to raise a 100,000 peso fund from various individuals and donate 20 bicycles in total. JP Nunez, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Department of Education has recorded nearly 10 million enrollees for the upcoming school year. During the Senate Committee on Basic Education, Arts and Culture hearing this morning, Education Secretary Leonor Briones said this accounts to 36% of the agency's projected enrollment for this year. Region 4A registers the most number of enrollees with 1.6 million. Despite being the epicenter of the COVID-19 infection, National Capital Region records 1.4 million enrollees, follow followed by Region 3 with 1.4 1.1 million enrollees. Of the 9.9 million, 4.8 million enrolled for the elementary, while 3.2 million for junior high school and 1 million for senior high school. Briona says this shows the cooperation of parents, teachers, and local government units. The remote enrollment period will last from June 1 to 30. We know that it is very difficult, it's very tough. Right now, we would not be ready of this on this day. But by August 24, we can be ready and we are on the road to readiness. Earlier, the department announced there will be no face-to-face -face classes until a vaccine against the COVID-19 is developed. According to the secretary, they are in the process of printing learning modules for learners to have no gadgets or access to internet connection and even to television and radio. She adds the agency has been coordinating with its partner donors in giving gadgets such as tablets and smartphones to children in need. However, Briones clarifies the agency is not accepting cash donations. Those who would like to donate gadgets may coordinate with DEPED's external partnership office or Secretary Briones's office. The Education Secretary is also calling for the implementation of free Wi-Fi connections to be used by teachers and learners. See, all of us know that uh, we don't have full uh, connectivity in all places of the Philippines. And this is why we are also um, supporting uh, your um, bill for a free Wi-Fi, for example, to make them available, a free use of the uh, facilities for the Deaf and Commons from the uh, servers themselves. 
Forward Spark, the Department of Information and Communications Technology, says it is now on the works to fast-track the setting up of free Wi-Fi hotspots in schools and other public spaces in line with its free Wi-Fi for all program. DICT Secretary Gregorio Honasan says in a statement that he ordered the agency's team to coordinate with the education sector to accelerate the installation of free Wi-Fi internet access and to provide technical assistance. A final assessment for the official opening of classes in June will be conducted by DEPID together with Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases on July 15. Jago William, we are on board the UN TV radio mobile booth and we are here in Welcome Rotonda along Quezon Avenue in Quezon City. Let's take a look at the situation on the road. Jago Williams, so far we have a light traffic um, situation along the southbound lane of Quezon Avenue from vehicles coming from EDSA going to Espana, Manila. Meanwhile, we have a light to at times moderate traffic on the other side of the road, the northbound lane going to EDSA and to E. Rodriguez Avenue. Just a quick reminder, the roads are slippery tonight due to rains that we are currently experiencing. So to our drivers, slow down and take action extra caution while on the road and for our weather update major parts of the country will experience moderate to heavy rains until this coming weekend this after a low pressure area intensified into a tropical depression named Buchoy according to state weather bureau Pagasa Buchoy was located southeast of Infanta Quezon around 2 p.m. today Pagasa warned of possible flash floods and landslides in all parts of the country due to the tropical depression Bicol region and areas in the eastern part Part of the country will experience moderate to heavy rains. Buchoy is the second tropical depression to enter the Philippines this year. Bitcoin is digital money that's instant, private, and free from bank fees. Sounds exciting, right? But the Department of Finance warns the public fake news or false information about Bitcoin revolution. Here's Monoxon to explain why. In a Facebook post, the Department of Finance has made, it warns the public about the proliferation of false information that pertains to Finance Secretary Carlos Domingos III, supposedly promoting a cryptocurrency auto-trading program called Bitcoin Revolution. Bitcoin is a virtual or digital currency used as a payment in exchange for a product or service. The department said that the DOF staff observed similar investment schemes that fraudulently used the names of treasury and finance officials in other countries to encourage potential investors to join their programs. Last month, the DOF also issued a warning against another cryptocurrency scam. According to the department, the peddlers of the false information claims that the government has created a platform called Bitcoin Lifestyle. The fake information also indicates that President Duterte is urging all citizens of the Philippines to learn about Bitcoin lifestyle quickly to get involved. The government also warned about investment scams, such as BitThru Cash, Bit2 Cash Trading Incorporated, AVP88, Paternix Egg Farm, AVP88 Trading Incorporated, and 727 Tycoon, One Tycoon. These investment schemes promise returns. One option is to invest 1,000 to 500,000 with a lock-in period of one month with a promised 50% weekly income depending on the amount invested. The second option, the referral reward option, allows the investor to earn a 10% direct referral bonus by referring other investors to the company. People who act as salesmen, brokers, dealers, or agents or claim to act as such for these entities in order to sell or convincing people to invest in their schemes will be fined 5 million pesos or 21 years of imprisonment or both. The DOF urges the public to report suspicious investment schemes to the Enforcement and Investor Protection Department of the Securities and Exchange Commission at telephone number 0288185704. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And for the news abroad, here's Jovic Burmas live from the United Kingdom. 
Good evening, Jovi. Good evening, William, and also to Diego and Harleen. How are you? Jovic, uh, I am fine and um, I hope you are doing good too. We know that the coronavirus pandemic has caused a drastic changes in different areas of life. But there's also the fact that somehow the current situation brought about positive effects as well, especially in our environment. How about there in the United Kingdom? Are there any favorable changes amid uh, the pandemic? Oh yes, William, talking about the global mm -hmm. consequences of coronavirus leading countries to impose nationwide lockdowns, we can still say that this has become beneficial for our environment. In particular today, William, Great Britain has passed a significant milestone that for the last two full months, this country did not burn any coal to generate electricity. Over the last decades, about 40% of the households and business establishments in the UK consumed energy by burning coal. However, when the country went into lockdown, the demand for electricity dropped dramatically, thereby forcing the national grid to shut down coal-fired plants. From midnight of May April 9, no coal has been burnt to produce electricity since. This, in return, remarkably reduced the UK's carbon dioxide emissions that are known to cause detrimental effects to the Earth's atmosphere, such as global warming. I also have news, William, why the scrapping of 2 meter social distancing rule here in the UK looms. Jovic, please tell us why. Here in the UK, following the announcement of British Prime Minister Boris Johnson on Wednesday to further ease the restrictions in England, some members of the Conservative Party demand the government to scrap the current 2 meter social distancing rule. This comes after Johnson told the public that starting Saturday, single adults in England can now stay at one another's household in a bid to combat loneliness and strengthen mental health by forming a support bubble. This relaxation excludes those vulnerable who are shielding and other devolved nations such as Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. However, there are still growing concerns from the MPs, including former cabinet ministers Sir Ian Duncan Smith and Damien Green, saying that two-meter social distancing rule significantly impedes UK's economic recovery. Sir Ian added downgrading from the 2 meter to a 1 meter distance policy in accordance with the World Health Organization's guidance already implemented in France, Denmark and Singapore is the key to unlock the British economy. This motion is backed by the UK business community. Turkish Airlines and its budget carrier Anadolu Jet resumed today some of their international flights to Germany, Britain, and Netherlands, only carrying passengers with approved documents. The outbound flights could only carry passengers with EU citizenship, residence permit, or certain visas, a spokesman for Istanbul's Sabiha Gokken Airport told Reuters. Leisure Airlines Son Express, a joint venture of Turkish Airlines and Lufthansa, said it also started flights to Germany and Switzerland upon Civil Aviation Authority permits. Budget Airlines Pegasus said it will start operating two-way flights to certain destinations in Germany as of June 13 and will carry certain passengers with necessary documents or permits, Pegasus said on its website. Amazon.com Incorporated on Wednesday said it is implementing a one-year moratorium on police use of its facial recognition software. This is a reversal of its long-time defense of law enforcement's use of the technology. The announcement came as activists have been voicing concern that facial recognition could lead to unjust arrests during demonstrations against police brutality, racial injustice, and the death of George Floyd. Critics have questioned the accuracy of the technology, pointing to Amazon's recognition service that had struggled to identify the gender of individuals with darker skin in a past study. Amazon has taken issue with that research. Amazon says it has pushed for regulations to ensure the technology was used ethically. The technology company adds this one-year moratorium might give Congress enough time to implement appropriate rules and that it stands ready to help if requested. 
Now, here's something refreshing. Drone footage taken by Australian researchers has captured tens of thousands of sea turtles nesting on an island near the Great Barrier Reef. This footage was taken in December of 2019. Researchers from the Queensland Department of Environment and Science said Tuesday that drone technology has helped them more accurately survey the number of sea turtles nesting on Rain Island. Previously, researchers would paint a non-toxic white stripe down the turtles' shells and would count the turtles, those with and without white stripes, from a small boat. But this method of counting proved inaccurate due to visibility conditions, the researchers said in a media release. Using drone vision, they were able to analyze each frame in a laboratory and calculated that the turtle's population had been underestimated in the past by a factor of 1.73. Rain Island, where the sea turtles were nesting, is the world's largest green turtle rookery. Drones have really been contributory to information gathering just like our UN TV drone, William. And those are the reasons behind the news here in the United Kingdom and in other parts of the globe. Back to you, William. Well, uh, thank you, Jovic, for all of those reports. And uh, we wish you uh, uh, to be safe uh, there in London. The organizing committee of the Tokyo Games said at a press briefing yesterday, the process for the upcoming Olympics will be simplified to guarantee that the games are cost efficient and safe. The committee said it is looking into a simplified plan that focuses on lowering the cost of the games and COVID-19 prevention and control. The plan may include reducing the number of workers. However, services and support for players will be maintained. The organizing committee stressed that the simplified plan needs further study to ensure that the event will be entertaining to spectators. The Tokyo Games was initially scheduled to take place from July 24 to August 9, but was put off due to the novel coronavirus pandemic. Now, the Olympics and Paralympics have been rescheduled from July 23 to August 8 next year instead. Meanwhile, weightlifting could lose its place in future Olympic Games, the International Olympic Committee had said. An independent report on June 4th said the International Weightlifting Federation, or IWF, was plagued by decades of corruption orchestrated by autocratic former President Thomas Ajahn. This included vote buying, doping cover-ups, and $10.4 million in cash that cannot be accounted for, though, an, uh, though Ajahn has denied any wrongdoing. Thomas Back, IOC president, what we can already say now is that we will fully support the new leadership of Weightlifting Federation and the acting president in her efforts to reform the governance of the Federation and also in her efforts to make the anti-doping system fully independent from the Federation. Back added that the IOC would also not grant any accreditation from the Tokyo Olympics next year to any IWF official implicated by the ongoing inquiry. On the other hand, in May, the IOC has approved the International Weightlifting Federation's revised Olympic qualifying system for Tokyo 2020. Seen robots with different features helping across the globe in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic. One such robot that uses 5G technology can tell the temperature of someone in front of it and even remind them to wear a face mask. And this kind of robot, a welcome help for a retirement home in Austria. Nina Armilio has the details why. A retirement home in the Austrian town of Linz is getting by with a little help from a robot. Project 5G Campus has taken advantage of the newly installed 5G standalone network and will install a Corona Aid assistant in the lobby of the retirement home. Visitors in the senior residency will approach the robot and are scanned in real time, allowing the robot to take their temperature and remind forgetful guests to put their masks on. The robot also speaks. 
Thanks to the 5G technology and its high data rate transfer and very short delays, the robot can be steered from a distance. This is especially necessary. Should the robot lose its autonomic operation mode, then we can help him to sort himself out or move him. The project is a cooperation between Linz, Telecom, Huawei, and Livest. Nina Armilio, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And those are the reasons behind the news June 11, 2020. I am Harleen Delgado. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Visions we deliver to you as they unfold. Emmanuel Castro the third. And I am William Theo, because we need to know, we will always ask why. Have a great evening, everyone.